This is a brief overview of several techniques that were developed to help screen the dissolution kinetics of polymeric coatings. Particularly this work was concentrated on the Krizotnib project, which consists of microspheres. The microsphere itself consists of a waxy core, which contains the API, then is subsequently coated with a polymeric coating, which controls the pH at which the core is released. When the microsphere is first ingested at the higher pHs, the polymer inhibits the dissolution. Once it reaches the lower pHs of the stomach, the polymer rapidly dissolves, uncovering the underlying core and therefore releasing the API. The issue with the current dissolu dissolution techniques is that it requires making the core and film coating, which requires substantial time and API. Therefore, we were seeking a way of screening the various combinations of polymer plasticizer and curing conditions using some faster techniques. The following shows polarized light microscopy video of the microspheres dissolving at various pH conditions. Overlaid the PLM videos is the mass of the API released as a function of time as measured by traditional dissolution bath measurement. At the higher pH of 6.2, the polymer stays relatively intact and therefore prevents the API from dissolving. As the pH is decreased, such as 5.5, we can see that the polymer then starts to swell and eventually creates pockets at which the API is released. At the lowest pH of 4.5, we see that the polymer rapidly dissolves and hence releases the API as can also be seen by the rapid increase at very short times as measured by dissolution bath. The important message here is that the polymer itself is what is controlling the dissolution rate and therefore by just measuring the polymer dissolution should give some approximate idea of how fast the API will be released in the microsphere formulation. One method to measure the polymer dissolution rate might be to use a quartz crystal microbalance. A quartz crystal microbalance consists of a piezoelectric material, as shown here. A piezoelectric material is a material in which an, when an electric field is passed over or through the material, causes a deformation. In this case, we use an alternating electric field, which causes an oscillatory motion. The resonant frequency of the oscillation is related to the mass, as given by the equation at the bottom, where it Delta M is the change in mass, which is equal to some constant, which is a function of the crystal parameters, times the change in frequency. The overlying graph shows an example of what the dissolution measurement may look like with a QCM. Observing the frequency curve, it starts out at a decreasing frequency with time as the polymer swells and gains mass. With time, polymer starts to dissolve, the frequency shifts up and then plateaus as it fully dissolves. The mass is the negative of that change in frequency. A QCM also can measure what is called dissipation, which is a measure of how squishy or flexible the polymer film is. While a quartz crystal microbalance provides an excellent way to measure the mass dissolution rate of the polymer, it is also convenient to have some visual information of how the polymer film dissolves, similar to how the polarized light microscopy was used for the microsphere dissolution. One technique to measure the dissolution of the polymer film is cast onto a flat substrate could be to use what is called optical coherence tomography. OCT is based on a Michelson interferometer. The following video shows an example of a Michael Center ferometer for a monochromatic radiation source. The radiation emanating from the source goes to a beam splitter. At the beam splitter, part of the radiation is transmitted down to the substrate that's being measured and part is reflected to a movable mirror. The radiation then is recombined from the substrate and the mirror and is sent to a detector. The detector measures the temporal interference pattern of the radiation. 
the difference between an OCT and a typical interferometer is the use of broadband radiation. Therefore, OCT has better resolution and can measure over larger distances than using a monochromatic light source. Combining OCT with QCM provides a powerful method to measure the dissolution of the polymer films. The following shows a combination of QCM and OCT measurements. In particular, the polymer is cast on a microscope slide and then submerged in buffer solutions of varying pH and a measure via OCT. The background graph shows the mass of the polymer film as a function of time as measured by QCM. At a pH of 6.2, the OCT shows that there's very little change in the polymer film over the duration of the experiment. This is reconfirmed by the QCM measurement which shows only a slight increase in mass as a function of time which is due to the polymer being swelled by water. As the pH is lowered to 5.5, there is an initial increasing increase of the polymer film thickness as it swells followed by its dissolution. Again, QCM confirms this and shows an initial increase in the mass followed by a subsequent decrease in the mass as the polymer film dissolves. Finally, at the lowest pH, we see that there is a very rapid decrease in mass as the polymer dissolves. This can also be seen at the beginning of the video which shows that the polymer film dissolves within the first minute or so of the experiment. The QCM and OCT measurements are an excellent way to probe the dissolution of the pure polymer. However, it is not possible with either experiment to differentiate between different components in a mixture, such as a fully formulated chrysotinib core coated with a polymer. Therefore, we sought an additional technique that could actually measure the dissolution of the API with the polymer over top. To do this, we used a technique called attenuated total internal reflectance, and in this case, we were using infrared spectroscopy. The cartoon at the top of the page shows an example of what this measurement may look like. At the base is the ATR crystal in which the infrared radiation bounces within the crystal. When it bounces off the interface, it releases what is called an evanescent wave, which penetrates into our sample and therefore we can get a spectroscopic reading of the sample above the surface of the crystal. In this case we have a chrysotinib core coated with a polymer film and then on top we put our buffer solution of the varying pH. The graph on the bottom left shows the experimental data of the absorbance as a function of wavelength for a chrysotinib coating on the ATR crystal. We can see that there's three bands that we're focusing on. Bands in the 3400 range are due to water and we see that they grow in over the life of the experiment due to water diffusing into our sample and becoming closer to the crystal interface. Conversely, if we look at the bands associated with the polymer and the API, they initially start fairly high and then rapidly decrease as the polymer film dissolves and then subsequently later the API core begins to dissolve. Finally, the plot on the right plots the absorption as a function of time of the experiments. This clearly shows the rate at the different components dissolving. We see the water peak growing in, the polymer peak growing down, and a slower but noticeable slight decrease in the API signal. Therefore, using this technique, we can differentiate the selective dissolution of the different components. This summary has discussed some new techniques to help screen formulations consisting of polymer films. In particular, we looked at QCM. QCM provides fairly accurate mass measurements of the dissolution of a polymer film. The accuracy is on the order of nanograms and is therefore sufficient for very small available masses of the polymer. One of the shortcomings of QCM as pointed out is its inability to discriminate between multiple components for a full formulation mixture. OCT provides an excellent way to visualize the way the polymer film swells and subsequently dissolves in situ. 
The current instrument in Groton is limited to approximately 10 microns for a film thickness. However, other instruments with varying bandwidth can increase this resolution. As with QCM, OCT does not provide any chemical data. To understand the dissolution of complex or multi-component systems, we used ATR. This technique was able to differentiate the dissolution of three different components in the chrysotina mixture. It should be cautioned that at this time it is difficult to fully quantitate the ATR measurement and therefore it should be used more as a quantitative or semi-quantitative screening of the dissolution of a multi-component mixture.